Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University and Wolverine, issue number eight, celebrating the 350th anniversary of, you know, like issues, 350 issues of Wolverine. I guess that's not including all the X-Men books he's been in and everything else. Not ever. It's cool. I, I find it a strange choice to have Maverick on the front cover, though, like as if Maverick is somehow the, the, the character that's going to sell this book. Right? <laughs> Who likes Maverick? Who's got him on his freaking shelf? I mean, come on. Anyway, um, interesting. Very interesting choice. Also possibly explains a lot of why certain enemies were able to breach Krakoan defenses, get certain acquisitions. Yo, the mutants have a, a traitor amongst their own, but not amongst their own. Wow. Y'all should be accounting for more than just the mutants that you see, man. Anyway, let's get to talk about who made this comic book. Yeah, I'll talk a bit about the book itself. Excuse me. So this is called The Past Ain't Dead. And man, they really beat that one to death in uh, towards the end of this comic book, man. The past ain't dead. Don't have no more. First one said. That's good to know, man. Benjamin Percy does the writing for both of these stories. There's the... Uh, beginning story with Adam Kubert on art and Antonio Fabella doing the colors. Uh, that's Then there's the prologue, War Stories. Um, also, Benjamin Percy writing and Victor Bogdanovic doing the art with Matthew Wilson doing the colors. Letters in production by VCs Corey Petit and uh, design by uh, Tom Mueller. Anyway, uh, Kubert and Martin do the cover, a bunch of variant covers. There's like a lot of variant covers, whatever. And Jonathan Hickman, of course, the head of X. All right, guys. So, you know, mercenaries are supposed to be like the best of the best, right? I know that's what we call Wolverine, the best there is of what he does. No, mercenaries are actually supposed to be the best of the best. These are the guys who they served in the military. They did whatever they were told to do, whatever, and they moved on and... They kind of still had a hankering for war, but there were special forces in some way, shape, or form or another. And they decided, I want to stay in. Let's go work for some private company someplace and make some good money for doing the things that I sometimes like doing. But then you got this one guy in here who's an absolute chump stain. Like, he's definitely not John Wick, even though there's the idea of a stolen dog in here. I mean, like, what? is the purpose of this character to be an absolute chump stain. Congratulations! Mission successful. I enjoyed the art in here. I can't say particularly which one. They were both good. I enjoyed having Kubert and Bogdanovic's uh, art styles in this book at this excuse me, at the same time. I think only the first issue actually had that. So welcome back seven issues later. We, we get them both again. I am getting a little sick and tired of seeing the stories go back and forth and back and forth. You know, here, here's the Dracula story. Here's the, I don't know, other story. Can we just, can we just stop that? Like, can we tell both somehow? Can they be related to each other? If Percy has all these ideas, can you make them a little bit more linear so that it doesn't feel so weird reading the books going forward. I don't want either of these artists or the color artists to be out of work. I just want there to be some kind of synchronicity. synchronicity. <laughs> oh man, my brain is mush right now reading this story. We get a return of the singing stones, which I don't believe were actually introduced in the Wolverine stories. They were introduced in a different story. I think it was an X-Force specifically, also written by Percy. So it's interesting to see a description of them here and what they've been doing. It's funny that we get a Jeff Bezos in here. We get uh, the guy who does Google in here. Some politician, which I didn't recognize right away. Uh, the Pope is in here. Also, holy crap, Tony Stark is in here. All of these people Beast is spying on, and that's freaking great the part where it's like hey patsy is what finally gave it is what ultimately gave it away because i'm like patsy you mean patsy walker like that's who um tony stark is actually dating right now so holy crap that was pretty good his ski, ski lodge and you know the math doesn't make up mutants are dying but there's still just as many mutants how does that make sense <laughs> it's resurrection dipshit um there's a lot in this book that I enjoyed, more that I enjoyed than I didn't. It's just the problems were kind of glaring. Again, I don't want to see two stories 
and and you know, like one story this week and two stories next week and then back to the other story again stop please stop like it's not even making it dress right dress it's not making it make sense but i do like the idea that patch is back i mean it's benjamin percy he likes writing these super spy thriller type stories and comics so for the love of god man wasn't patch the perfect idea for him to do so it makes sense to bring him back. I also like the idea that he brought him back with that Wolverine issue number eight from volume two uh, cover where he and the, uh, the the Gray Hulk were in those uh, white top tuxedos <laughs> with the black pants. Oh, man, it's really great to see that image again. I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, no. So when they did the, the eye patch later on, it was really just confirmation for what I could already figure out by looking at it. Uh, there's a lot of cool things here for the fans. For, I mean, for like the long-term fans who read that amazing first, uh, what was it, like the first 50 issues were really exceptional for Wolverine, maybe the first 75. But um, for me, the first 20 particularly were just out of control, good blood sport and blood scream. No, roughhouse and blood scream. Hello. I'm really hoping to see those characters again. Uh, nobody has to be dead anymore, right? Like, if he's in Madripoor, if he's pulling this stuff again, if he's out here bringing up the patch thing again, dude, don't let this be a temporary thing. The Bannon stuff in the beginning, the CIA, hey, tell me a story stuff, it was a little bit weird. Also, it seems a little weird that a, a, a current CIA agent would have an active Krakoan gate in his backyard. Like, really? Of all things, in your backyard so anybody can see it? I mean, people have the news, you know? That one in Central Park is particularly famous, that Krakoan gate. So, of course, when they're being spied on and nobody can figure that out, Wolverine's downwind and can't smell something right up there. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that this book could have been better, but I am hopeful for the future. If Percy just plays close to his strengths, or at least what I observe as his strengths, and just has this story, it's Patch, he's yeah, he's keeping contact with Bannon, but for the most part, he's by himself. Like, just, if you're going to do a solo Wolverine story, skip the X-Men. We don't need them. Like, they're completely unnecessary in this. Just have Wolverine being Patch, getting into tussles with people, trying to uncover stuff. He is a detective. I mean, not the greatest detective, but he's a detective. He used to be a spy. He knows how to figure things out. Let him be that. Make him that again. Give us a Wolverine story that's separate from all this other bull that's going on with the X-Men and whatnot. That's what I'm really hoping for. Um, what they can do with the artists is their own choice. I really don't have a preference. Uh, I love Kubert. I love Bogdanovic. Uh, their art styles are both amazing. If you want to do the, the prologue thing and what, fine. Be my guest. Do that, right? But one artist for the main stories. I mean, that's what I'm really requesting. If you can, you know what? A good idea also would be to have uh, Bogdanovic doing the main story, but then the, the past is prologue stuff, since that's what they want to be focusing on here. Consider having Kubert doing the, the, the memories that, uh, that, that Logan Patch uh, you know, has. That I think would be a great idea. This way you don't have to say, years ago, you could literally just switch styles. We will recognize it, we will understand what's happening because comic book fans are a little bit smarter than sometimes these, these execs at Marvel give us credit for. But I think that would be a really good way to do it also. And this way you're forcing Benjamin Percy to bring up uh, ideals and, and events from Logan's past. I mean, if you're bringing up Maverick in the first place, this damn well better have a lot to do with his past. So what a great way to do that. And that's literally just the top of my head suggestion for what to do here. But they have to get a lot more dress right dress with their stories. I understand it's going to be spy thriller from here on out for a while at least. So, hey, maybe consider having a little bit more, you know, linear art for what we're seeing as we go forward. Guys, this review is more of a hopeful for the future thing because... Something that I see with Percy a lot is, here's a great plot. 
Here's an amazing synopsis. There's so much that you can do going forward in this comic book. But when we do move forward, it's usually more of the exact same. Bruh, we're in issue eight in this issue. This review is for issue number eight. Enough of, I'm really hopeful for the future. I'd like the future to be now. All right, if the past is not dead, maybe the future is already born. I want to see what I'm hoping to see, and that is something amazing, something that's going to get me saying this is one of the best books out right now. I want Wolverine being the best there is at what he does and knowing it's not very nice. Anyway, guys, I'm out. Like the video, watch an ad. Talk to you all later. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.